Hello friends and family and welcome to our boring meditation stuff, this uh, ongoing conversation about uh, crippling anxiety and meditation. Um, I actually wanted to go over uh, a topic that maybe doesn't get uh, enough surface area <laughs> um, today, which is the times when you should not try Vipassana. So these videos have generally been about Anapana, but Anapana is, um, it is, is a perfectly valid meditation practice unto itself, but it is usually kind of a precursor to Vipassana. Um, and there, there are two situations um, I've been made aware of over the past few years where I think that this is actually a bad idea. One is common, I think, amongst the uh, Indian middle class. Um, and it is this idea that Vipassana is something you, you do once. Um, you you do it once and then you say, I've done it, I, I made it, I made all 10 days, silence. Um, and this was first made apparent to me after my second course. I came back and a friend of mine, you know, like me, all of my friends are Indian middle class, but um, a friend of mine sincerely asked, why on earth did you go for a second course? Like, what were you thinking? Why would you want to go for a second course? And if you wouldn't want to go for a second course, why would you go for your first course? Um, there is some merit to the idea that you should give the technique trial, that you should experiment with it. But the idea that you should go with the explicit intention of only going once just so that you can say you can do it like running a marathon or climbing a mountain um, is is a bad idea and it is it's a waste of your time it's a waste of the teacher's time it's a waste of the time of the volunteers um, and all of all of those folks um, speaking from personal experience as a volunteer uh, you're giving a lot. You're giving 10 days um, of volunteer time. And if someone is just showing up to prove that they can do it, um, that is an unbelievable waste. So that would be one case. Please don't do it under those circumstances. Um, do it when you're sincere. Do it when you really want to sit for 10 days of meditation. And that's actually a thing you want to try to see what will happen, to see what the technique is like. The other case I was actually made aware of only recently, uh, which is that this has become similarly a kind of rite of passage in the Bay Area among technologists. And in no small part due to the fact that Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, has now gone for two Vipassana courses, two 10-day Vipassana courses. And um, he, he's certainly um, made uh, a bit of a scene of that uh, on Twitter, of course. <laughs> he's the CEO of Twitter. And people would respond and there would be back and forth conversation. Um, and I was aware of that, but I wasn't aware that this has become a sort of tech bro, circle thing um, where within that circle you you can kind of tick this box you can say uh, yeah I've done it I've, I've gone for a Vipassana course um, I know it's a, I know what it's all about and the thing is is that before your first Vipassana course you have no idea you have no idea what it's about um, but without taking the Vipassana course seriously you also have no idea what it's about. So everyone's experience on their first Vipassana course is different, but 
I have taken courses less seriously or I've been not in the right frame of mind. Um, and I've certainly witnessed other people who are taking the course and are not taking it seriously. And those people get nothing out of it. And on those courses where I wasn't in the right frame of mind or I wasn't ready to take it as seriously as it needed to be taken, I got very little out of it. Um, and this is again a huge waste of your time. It's 10 whole days. And it is a huge waste of the volunteers' time, the teacher included. It's a huge waste of resources. It's not cheap to run Vipassana courses, and they are free for you as a student, but they're not free, free. Someone has to pay for that. Um, donors have to pay for that. And those donors are actually previous volunteers. <laughs> so it, it's, it's people who are volunteering, who are donating their money so that people can meditate sincerely. Um, so under these two, two circumstances, I mean, they're essentially the same thing. This idea of using Vipassana as a sort of rite of passage. Um, don't go. Don't go for a Vipassana course. If you're not going to take it seriously, it's, it's not worth your time or anyone else's time. Um, if you are not ready yet, uh, that's, that's something else entirely. So. If you genuinely can say to yourself, I'm not ready, I'm not ready for the course, continue practicing anapana. Anapana is how you will spend 11 hours a day for the first three days of a Vipassana course. So it is there <laughs> deeply. Um, it's 33% of the course. And it's well worth your time. It's an extremely valuable meditation practice. And as you practice Vipassana, sorry, as you practice Anapana more seriously and you become more comfortable with it and your mind stops wandering quite so much, you will find that you're feeling more and more ready to try the course. The course will still be intimidating, but um, you'll, you'll know when you're ready to, to give it a shot. But in these other two cases, where you're just doing it to tick a box, you're just doing it to say to your friends that you've done it, don't bother. All right, uh, I hope that um, this is this video is probably not so much for my friends and family because I think they all, all of, all of you <laughs> know this already. So this video is probably for the people who are stumbling along onto these videos um, by chance. <laughs> if they happen to hear me talking about Vipassana and they, they think, oh, that thing that Jack Dorsey does. Um, I hope everyone's taking care of themselves. I hope everyone's taking care of their family. I'll put up the link to the Anapana instructions again. Why not? Um, since I've been talking about it. Um, take care and I will talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye.